It is time for Dr. Doug. Now, Dr. Doug is where you at home can tweet Doug any question you may have, and he can give you the prescription, possibly the diagnosis. It is at Doug Kazarian. Um, and this one today comes from uh, some strange lad named Newer J. It's a weird one. Uh, all right. At I am Newer J says, Dr. Doug, there is a plethora of NBA games today. Too much for me to choose from. What is your favorite NBA picks? Well, Newer, I... Every, I mean, first time, long time, maybe. You, you know, I I, I might have tweeted last night. I'm not sure. I might have tweeted last right. night. So I really like two plays in the NBA, one particularly a lot. So Indiana's playing Chicago. This Pacers team, I touched on it last week with Brian. I think they could lead the league in scoring. They need everyone to stay healthy. But their mentality, the chuck and duck offense, and they don't play a lick of defense. And Halliburton, Tyrese Halliburton is awesome. He, he's on the national team, did well with them. Last summer, he just makes this offense go, and he just fills up the stat sheet. He's a perfect fit for a run-and-gun offense like they have. Okay. So this over-under is 226 at the time of this taping. In the three games they played last year with Chicago and Levine played and Halliburton, 230, 233, 247. I'm expecting closer to 240 here. I think this is a banger. Here I say, get out the hammer. Oof. And uh, I might even chop it up first half and game and things like that. I really like this play because Chicago has a tendency to play down to their scoring of the opponent. So they'll have they'll they're perfectly fine being in a rock fight with guys like DeRozan and some other stuff. But they'll get up and down with Indiana. I think the Pacers will score, and whether or not the Bulls hold up their end of the bargain. But I think the Pacers could do 120, 125 themselves. And so we only need 105, 110. Right. From Chicago, so that's why I really like this. It feels like a low number. I think this will get steamed overnight. The other game I like, and you know, it's all about situational handicapping. And I'm, and it's not quite a hammer, but this Pelicans team is very good with Zion Williamson. They are so loaded; those pieces complement each other. McCollum can play off the ball. Obviously, Zion's their big, and then Brandon Ingram can be a catch and shoot guy too. They just all fit well, and they're really, really well coached. Now the Warriors come to town. Warriors got the win on Sunday, and they were in a heated game with Houston. They get everyone's best shots. They had the big win against Sacramento in the playoff rematch. Then they go to Houston. This is a team that struggled to win road games all last year, especially the beginning of last year. And they open up 2-0 and on the road. Mm -hmm. I just think the Steph variable, he can go off, and that's what he did in the fourth quarter against the Rockets, and this was a tight game. Houston had the lead, and then they lost by 10. So... I, that Steph could obviously win a game by himself, but that's just the risk you take. But outside of that, New Orleans is very good, and they, they're catching them in the right spot. Pelicans caught the Knicks in the good spot, back to back, all that, and then blew them out. I think this has a chance. So it's minus three right now. I really like the Pelicans in this situational spot. Now, those who are involved in live wagering, I'm expecting to take plus like seven and a half with Golden State or six and a half, something like that to have a middle. But I think just a straight wager, New Orleans minus three against the Warriors on Monday is a very good play. I like it. Dr. Doug says. Dr. Doug? I mean, do, you get, do, you get a, do I get a prescription? Or no, how's, no, how's, no, how's no work? stethoscope either. Now, you at home, if you ever have any questions, if you have a betting slip, maybe you just want some advice, please feel free. Send that tweet on over to Dr. Doug himself, and he will prescribe what's right for you.